Okay, fantastic. We're going live now. So welcome everyone. Uh, just putting here this record on the cloud for later use. Uh, so welcome. Thank you for joining us again. This is the last session of Power Skills 2021. The courage strikes back. Uh, we're so happy you made it through the whole day. And today we are extremely lucky uh, to end this strong with the financial planning uh, webinar with uh, Guillaume and Eduardo that I'll present a little later uh, in, the, in my presentation. So I just wanted to say that this session was organized by the Career Advising and Transition Service of McGill School of Continuing Studies in partnership also with uh, University Advancement. My name is Naru Gariepi and I'm part of the CATS team. Uh, so let me just welcome uh, our guest speakers today, um, Eduardo uh, Lima. Um, so here he's a faculty lecturer program coordinator in, fi in finance. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself even more, and I'll be and I'll be also uh, taking care of the chat. So feel free to uh, to write as many questions as you can. Thank you. Thank you, Nayo. Hello, everybody. So as Nayo was saying, I am. Um, I'm working at McGill University in the School of Continuing Studies. I'm responsible for the finance programs at the school. Um, and we have been working with uh, many students that are looking to make career changes or uh, recently arrived in Canada and level up their education. Having a McGill um, you know, certificate or diploma is always uh, uh, well valued in the job market. Um, I'm here to, to uh, speak about financial planning, one of the possible uh, professional areas in, uh, in the vast field of uh, finance. I'm here to speak with Guillaume Landry Allard. Um, and I'd like to introduce uh, Guillaume to you. He holds the financial planner designation and has been a division director at IG Wealth Management since 2017. With over 12 years of experience in the financial field, Guillaume has developed an approach that focuses on quality advice and close relationships with clients. He has a Bachelor of Business Administration and his experience and knowledge are highly valued by his colleagues and clients. Guillaume also excels at explaining and demonstrating in simple terms, the benefits that complex financial concepts can provide as is required for someone who works as a financial planner. There's a, a huge amount of education involved in the day-to-day -day work. His refined analytical skills let him grasp and make sense of complex situations. All of this allows Guillaume to be competitive and efficient in a perpetually changing industry. So Guillaume is here to really give you the insider information, all the, uh, the details that you might be interested with respect to the career of financial planning. I will be kind of moderating or interviewing uh, his contributions by sometimes asking a few prepared questions. And we will be uh, also interested in uh, hearing your own questions from the audience uh, for Guillaume and for myself as well. I will be you know, trying to contribute from a more general finance perspective. Um, and I'll be glad to speak more about whatever uh, questions you may have for me as well. So Guillaume, I will let you say a few words to start, uh, maybe about yourself, something that I have missed, and, uh, and then I, I can start asking you know, one or two questions. What do you think? Thanks a lot, Eduardo. Thanks a lot for, for having me today. Uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure for me to, to demonstrate a little bit uh, to, to future students, I can say, uh, what is financial planning and the difference that it can make in people's lives. Uh, I've been in that industry, I would say, for the last 15 years. So in finances, uh, as you mentioned, I studied in business, business administration before, and it is a field that is very, very interesting. It's something that it's constantly changing. Um, so I think for, for a seminar, for a, a conference like this, it's something really nice to try to, to grab the, 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 the feeling of, of being, of working in that, in that business, in that field. So it's going to be a pleasure to have that conversation with you. Uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, and I think uh, Nairo mentioned it in the chat too, feel free to ask questions. Meanwhile, uh, we can check and see if there's anything that could be added to, to the, uh, the conversation while we're doing it, 
or we might take question at the end, depending how it, how it flows. So feel free to to interfere and, and get in that conversation. It's going to be, be even more interesting. Great. So um, welcome again to all of the uh, folks who decided to um, be present here and uh, feel free to uh, send, send questions as well. I think you have access to a chat box. Um, so I, let me start uh, asking you, uh, Guillaume, can you tell us a little bit about your career and how your education led to where you are today? So the interplay between your education and the career. Definitely. Um, to be really honest, and I, I'm happy you talked about that in the, in the beginning, you mentioned that there might be some people that are uh, refocusing their career to look into a finance program. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I studied in computer science before. That's the first thing I did. And when I graduated, I said, no, that's not what I want to do in my life. So I loved taking those courses. I think it was a really uh, important knowledge to gain. However, I, that made me realize also that it's not the field that I wanted to do. So at this point, I was maybe 23, 24 years old. Uh, I decided to go into finances at university. So that was a, a turning point, I can say, in my life to start a new degree in, uh, in finances. So I did, as you mentioned, the uh, business administration uh, bachelor which opens to, I would say, a lot of possibilities. So financial planning as per se, and Eduardo, you could probably be even more specific than me on, on that, but financial planning as per se is not really uh, teached or trained in school. So normally, and I know McGill is having a program right now, so that's very, very uh, interesting for us. But basically when we learn finances, we learn more mostly corporate finances. And we don't get much into personal stuff. So what applies to individuals like you and I on a daily basis. So, so I did that course and I said, mm, what I like is people. I like, I like social. I like being involved with people. I like making change in people's lives. So at this point I said, I like finances. I like numbers, but I don't want to be an analyst working somewhere in an office, crunching numbers on a daily basis. That is not what I want to do. And so I was working at a bank at the moment and I, I started looking to what are the opportunities that could, where I could take all the knowledge, all the, all the things that I've learned into finances and apply them to actually make a change in people's lives, if you can put it that way. So financial planning came as, um, I would say, a revelation to me because in the beginning, I didn't quite know that thing exists. I mean, you're 23, 24 years old, not much investment, not much, uh, not much uh, uh, st complicated stuff in terms of finances. So when I first realized that, I started reading, I started learning, and I realized that the whole field of financial planning in Quebec is, uh, is regulated by the IQPF, which is the Institut Québécois de Planification Financière. And to be able to, to access the IQPF courses and eventually get a designation, you need in most cases a bachelor degree. So that was a very good point, very good path for me to get that finances degree. Then I moved to financial planning. Uh, and after that, but there's a lot of courses you can do to, to make your, um, your, your knowledge even more specific or to, to be better in certain fields. So I, I got some designation down the road. I got my, um, I'm always confused with the name of these in English, but uh, um, group, uh, group saving representative as well as the one coming from the insurance companies. Um, so these two really allowed me to, to be able to serve clients even on a broader basis. So we'll, we'll cover that later on, but that's basically what I came from. So what I, the message that was coming from that, I would say is everything you do. So from my point of view, I did computer science and then I went into finances. What I've learned or what I've gained into my, my three years of computer science, I'm using that on a daily basis in a sense that all the, 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 comp, the skills that I've learned are complementary and can be used all together no matter where I go. So from my point of view, no matter what you do in life or in terms of, of trainer or school, uh, it's never lost. It's always going to be used in something else. And I think I'm a good example, if I can say of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, very interesting that uh, 
finance today is being so much impacted by technology, right? So we hear about the uh, the fintech and the impact of uh, even in the job market. You know, you know, we are very pragmatic. We are, we are looking at the reality, and we uh, we are, you know, I work in education. Um, you work for a firm that offers uh, products to uh, to individuals. And, and services, you know, it's a, it's a product that's actually a service. It's a service that includes so much. And I, maybe I'd like uh, you to talk a little bit about um, what, what is, you know, what is involved. It, it's, it's very hands-on because you're looking at people's portfolios of activities. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. What is the interaction that you have with, the, with your clients? Um, what is the profile of your clients? Is there a typical client that you have or is there some variation of that? Um, and, and this way, maybe we can learn a little bit about uh, the, the work, what's involved, what you learn in school versus what actually you also apply, because it must be very much related. Definitely. Uh, I, I would just uh, confirm or, or clarify something when I was saying the insurance style, sorry, I forget the, the name, because I'm always familiar with those acronyms in, in French, but yeah. in English, we, we call it the financial security advisor. So it's one of the course that I had to take, so I'm sorry for oh, yes. the moment. So to your questions. Uh, financial planning is very holistic approach. And when, when I was starting into that field, from my point of view, financial planning was basically investments. Because when we talk about finances for, for individuals, what, what brings to, to, to mind to a lot of people is actually taking care of investments. But investments and portfolios and taking investment decision is basically one of the aspects that we're, we're looking at. And the, the, the name or the, the, yeah, the designation financial planner where means that we're really planning the lives of our clients for every aspect or every element that can show up in their life. So I'll give you an example. Um, I'm 45 years old, for instance. Uh, having a, a duplex in uh, downtown Montreal. Uh, I live with my wife. We have two kids that are almost grown ups going to McGill. And I'm starting to ask myself a lot of questions. So when should I retire? What should I do with my duplex? What are going to be the impact of the, the taxes, the fiscal impact when I decide to sell that duplex? If I want to give it to my kids, what would be the fiscal impact? What would be the best way to take that duplex and transfer it to them without losing some of our, um, our, of our value. And what happened if I die before that transfer happened? Uh, what happened if I die before my retirement? Uh, so there's a lot of questions that we can, we can ask ourselves. And the more complex our, 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 our strategy or the more complex our situation is, the more planning it requires. So if I'm, I'm working regular business, I have a, a pension plan with my employer, I have, I live in an apartment, there might be, there's still some good planning opportunity, some good, uh, good optimization that can be made. However, it might be a little um, easier if I consider my first example. So the more complex is my situation, the more planning we can do. And what I realized over years is that people don't know in most cases that there is planning to do unless you start that meeting. In a sense that I've never heard anyone asking themselves if they don't know or if they never started the process, oh, what's gonna happen with my duplex when I pass away? I mean, no one has themselves those questions. And it's our job as a financial planner to make them realize that hmm, the, the government might take half of your profit in taxes. Oh, okay, but there is some way to avoid this. What are those ways? So that's where a financial planner is gonna be useful. So who are our clients? I would say, Anyone, anyone that has, that, that wants to, how can I say, anyone that wants to, to be part of their finance, to take it, their finance in charge and being um, helped, if I can say, by someone that has knowledge of that field a little more than they do, can be a good potential for financial planning. So I think it's for everyone. I think it's for every moment of our lives because we don't start planning at 65 years old. We should start planning at 22. So the more, our, our biggest, um, the biggest element or our biggest ally that when it comes to financial planning is usually time. So a lot of people, again, seems to think, oh, I'll start about thinking about financial planning when I get to, it's good, but it might be too late. So it's, there's no matter 
how old we are, no matter how much assets we have, no matter how complicated our situation is, it's basically uh, being able to, um, to to plan in advance and to to make sure that all the aspects of the of the finances are taken care of. For sure, and uh, just to give another data point, in my case, I actually I do have someone who uh, helps me. Uh, they they play the role of financial planner for for me and in my in my household. Um, and 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 I have the pleasure to that that person is also a friend of mine uh, from earlier uh, periods in my career. But he's working as you know he he, is, uh, he works as a financial planner. He wor he works independently, um, and uh, and he's followed similar. Path. Obviously, uh, he was not, um, you know, every person comes from different um, backgrounds and different directions. He had his own as well. Um, and so that, yeah, that's another example there. And I'm happy that I actually have someone uh, looking at, at, uh, at, at my overall portfolio, my financial portfolio of who I am actually, right? Because, you know, you know, we all have finite um, resources, finite time. Uh, and so we want to make the best out of it. And uh, why not, um, you know, have, have a, uh, the structure that has been developed uh, by, um, you know, our science and, and our brilliant minds uh, to to be able to use this for a reasonable um, for a reasonable uh, price because uh, the service that is being um, offered here is a service that has quite a bit of value, right? So so uh, in fact, that is very interesting. there has been some uh, some research being made in the last years that says that a family household that is um, is helped or is is a companion, yeah, it's helped by a financial planner would gather 3.2 more wealth over 15 to 20 years than a household that is not uh, taken care of, if I can say by, an, by a financial planner. So it actually makes quite a big difference in people's lives. And it, it's really because there's so much things we don't know. I mean, we study for like, three, four, five years, depending how, how far we want to go in our in our uh, in our knowledge uh, to, to 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 get to that point. So there is a lot of stuff to to take care of. There is a lot of stuff to know. And I, I'm happy. It makes me smile that you say that it's a friend of yours that do that. Because what I always say to clients, I don't want to be the guy taking care of your RSPs. I want to be the guy that you call on a barbecue with friends because you have and you don't know the, the answer, you don't know how to, to tackle that, that quote, specific question. So I'm trying to be friends with my client. And, and one, one of the things that the, the, the parallel that we do, we all have a doctor, we all have a pharmacist, we all have a plumber, yeah. we all need a financial planner as well. It's part of our family, it's part of what we can do. Yeah. And it, it actually makes a difference. One of my, my, my job, if I can start the analysis that I'm doing, is I'm showing the client the value that we're trying to build. So this is the plan without doing anything. And if we put in place all the strategies and all the stuff that we want to do, here's the impact on your investment, on your taxes, on your uh, your estate, on your, so all the aspect, and we can actually bring value and calculate that value that we're bringing, bringing to a client. So that that's the interesting part. Yeah, great, great. Um... There's so much to talk about. I, I want to also ask you, uh, maybe I'll leave that for, for later. I want to ask you about uh, your firm and the work you do that uh, in, specifically, but you know, in terms of career, maybe people are thinking here about career. But before that, uh, just maybe to uh, maybe uh, conclude this uh, overall overview section, the role of, um, of technology and, uh, and the uh, robot advisors and the impact that this, these trends, uh, even in the face of the pandemic, you know, we can't ignore, uh, you know, what's going on in the world right now. There is so many trends and important trends and big changes um, in economy uh, and everything. Uh, it seems that financial planning is there to even grow because uh, even having um, so much machine uh, supporting the, this work, you still need to have this education component and this one-to-one, -one, this trust relationship that your client will want to have with you. So how do you view the job market evolution with, you know, uh, in this uh, real uh, world that we live in? That is a very, very interesting subject. And as of, I would say, every businesses are changing right now. Uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 brought actually 
at maybe a faster pace to all those changes over the last year. Um, I'll take our business, for instance, we're still fully operational. So as of now, I haven't missed one day of work from the time we, we were in the office and the time we we're working from home. I'm fully operational from home. So that's one of the good thing about financial planning is that we're relying on, on people, which we can meet through Zoom, Teams, and all those different platforms. We're relying on softwares that can be used everywhere. So for, for this part here, how do we adjust in, in a, a constant changing environment? And the pandemic is very, very important when it comes to that. Uh, it is, I would say, fairly easy. However, how the the business, our, our role is going to evolve over the, over the next 5, 10, 20 years. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of impact. And as, as you mentioned, the, the pace of, of technology growth over the last 25 years has been uh, dramatic on a, on, a, on a good point of view. I mean, it's, it's exponential. So if you remember 25 years ago, we were still using floppy disk, which were this big. And as of today, I can store the equivalent of a 1 trillion floppy disk into my phone. So this, this change is gonna be even more uh, accelerated over the next five years. And you mentioned robo, you mentioned algorithm. So investment, when we're, when we're all, if we're only isolating investments, investments are, driven or shouldn't be, but are driven by emotions. A lot of, of decisions that investors are taking are usually driven by their emotions. And emotion is usually one of the biggest uh, element to avoid when it comes to investment, because investments are very pragmatic, very, uh, very technical. So we're starting to realize, and that has been a trend for the last three, four, five years, that Computers, algorithm, robot can make investment probably better than we do because basically they're doing analysis and a machine can analyze a lot more data than I do. So what I think is going to be the evolution over the next 5, 10, 15 years is that eventually we're not going to be money managers. We're not going to be investing money for our clients. We're going to choose algorithm that's going to make the job for us. What we're going to do as planners, we're going to do planning. So that, that seems obvious, but we're going to work on strategies. We're going to work on, on, on making, taking decisions, on evaluating impact of different ideas. And that is something that, from my point of view, a computer cannot do that well. I was talking with a client earlier today, and I'll use that example. And we, we were really having a conversation of exactly the, the example I mentioned earlier, when should I sell my duplex? There is an economic moment that actually worked to sell that duplex for multiple reasons. But there is also a human consideration in there. There is an individual on the other side of my screen, because we're in Zoom right now, saying, yeah, but I do have, and that will sound funny, but I do have feelings. I do have objectives. I do have targets. I do have wife. I do have kids that are important in those decisions. I do have elements in my life. I want to travel. I want to play golf. I want to that will have an impact on, on those decisions. And what I like to say to clients is that there is a financial decision, the, one, the mathematical one, the one that it can be calculated and it's sure it's this. And there is the emotional decision, the one that you can't really put numbers on it, but, but it is usually the most important one. I, I, I can tell you, you have to work until 65 years old to be able to take retirement. But at the end of the day, if you ate your job, you might want to stop earlier. And it's my job as a financial planner to say, okay, you know what? You won't make it to 65. Here's how we're going to adjust. Here are the impact on your plans. Could you do one more year? And, and this is not something that a computer can do because it involves human feelings or human compassion between, between two individuals. So I think eventually computers will cover a lot of the, the technical, the mathematical part of our job, but everything that is involved with, with speaking with clients, with having those one hour, two hour conversation about what are your goals? What do you want to do in life? How, we, how can I help you achieve those goals by putting all the, the financial structure that you need around this? Uh, that is something that the machine cannot do. And that's where I think that just as a doctor, just as a pharmacist, I don't see the day where 
where I'll go to see my computer and say, you know what, computer, I'm not feeling for two weeks and I have a trouble with my, uh, my knees or my elbow or my, it won't work. Doctor will be there at least for the next hundred years. So it's about the same thing I see with financial planning. For sure. Great. Thank you so much. So I guess maybe before we go to, uh, to the questions that people have started asking, maybe I would just ask you to talk a little bit about um, IG and uh, wealth and your role. Uh, and, and so maybe this can be kind of a, uh, uh, some description of a possible job uh, uh, station for possible candidates that might be thinking about having, uh, you know, future jobs or they're working somewhere else. They might be thinking about joining this profession. Um, so I'll leave it up to you to choose your words. <laughs> Excellent. So for, for those who know IG or for those who doesn't, so IG Wealth Management, we're basically a, a financial planning firm. So we're similar to a bank in the sense that we do have our own lineup of products. We can do mortgages, we can do uh, uh, investment, we can do loans and all that stuff. But we're really um, introducing ourselves at being a, as being a financial planning firm. Reason behind that is I strongly believe that a product is not making a difference in someone's life. So if I'm meeting you today, Eduardo, and we're saying, ah. Oh, what would make you sleep better at night? Would you prefer uh, Bank of Nova Scotia investment or RBC investment or investors group, uh, IG Wealth Management investment? Or it doesn't really make a difference for you. So I don't like I don't like the idea of being a firm that offers financial products. Everyone can do that. Uh, I'd rather be, as we said, a financial planning firm, and I think that is something that that separates us a bit from from the banking industry. Banks or and all the other uh, the other companies involved, they do have financial planner too, but it, it's a different mentality because you need to have a specific number of assets to meet those planner and, and so on and so forth. We do have the, the the beliefs that an individual do need planning from the beginning of their financial life to the end, if I can say. So that's where we're, we're targeting. That's where we actually try to differenti differentiate ourselves is by really putting the, the focus on that planning. And when someone asks me, yeah, but what are the products you're offering? <clears throat> I'm offering whatever you want. That is not the challenge. That, that is not how we create value. So I was talking earlier today about how we show value and how we create value. And there's one thing that for ben, Franklin, Benjamin Franklin in the past said, there's two certain things in life, death and taxes. We're sure we're not going to avoid those two things. And it's actually still true today. So taxes is something that no matter what you do, there will be some taxes involved. You can't fly away from the from CRA. So I think that we can create way more value by being able to control and, and adapt and, and optimize taxes than by selecting a product that makes 1% more, 1% less. So, so I'm happy that IG made that, uh, that decision. And in fact, I was working in banks in the past. I made my move through IG about four or four years ago. And this is exactly the mm -hmm. triggered my, my decision is that I wanna show to my client that I'm doing real planning. So it is what we're doing right now. Uh, we have offices basically all across Montreal, North Shore and South Shores. We're all across Canada, in fact. And we do believe that there's always room for new financial planner, as well as we do believe there is always room for new entrepreneurs, for new, uh, new I mean, new families, new people. New, everything will grow and we need some planners to be able to, uh, to, to help those people. So it's really the, the idea that we have. So we're always looking for new new blood, if I can say, for new, new financial planners. We're offering a lot, lot of, uh, of, uh, of coaching, teaching, courses to make sure that when, we, when our, our people are going out there on the street, not on the street as per se, but meeting clients, we want to make sure that, that those conversations are at the maximum, the best possible. Uh, for people that are interested in, uh, in, in that field of business, but that's still uh, in, in university or still doing courses or still trying to, to see what they want to do in life, we do offer some internship that depends on offices, that depends on, on the, the time of the year, the needs that we have and so on. But it is something we're, we're uh, 
um, agreed or we were lying, not licensed, but uh, confirmed as being uh, a place for, for internship by the, uh, the different university. So it is something very interesting. And then someone can learn really the, the ins and outs on what we're doing on a daily basis. So, so I would say IG Wealth Management is a very nice firm to work at right now. But I would say even more, financial planning is a really nice field to work in right now. It's something that we do feel we make a difference. It's something that I wake up every morning and I'm happy to do the work that I'm doing. I love personally dealing with clients, dealing with colleagues, trying to really like speaking with people and say, okay, is this a good strategy? Or no, why don't we try this? And we're gonna update like that. That's really make a difference in people's life. And that's something that I like. I, I wouldn't be a doctor. I'm afraid of blood. I'm afraid of all that stuff. So my way of making a change in people's life is really by helping them through finances. So that's my. That sounds great. I love I love your um, enthusiasm. Uh, it's really contagious. Um, so is it fair to say? Is it fair to say that um, the financial planning? Um, is um, is in demand for jobs like the jobs are uh, you have you know, opportunities you know looking in the future you see that this is a career that is going to present with opportunities whether in IG or in other areas where financial planners can uh, you know is, is this an attraction type of point because of the need for this and we've just talked about the you know the outlook uh, in the near future with the role of technology and and everything else this is not going to go away so th this is a good career. And it is, and it's going to be even more, I think, because we've been talking through that for the last, I would say, three, four years. But the, the next 10 to 15 years are the years where all the wealth that was acquired by the baby boomers, so generation, I would say, before me, uh, is being transferred to that next generation. So all those entrepreneurs, all those, 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 those big, uh, um, not employees, but uh, I would say, president or bosses in different companies, uh, all the baby boomers that built wealth over the last 30, 40 years will be transferring that eventually. Transferring wealth in, in, um, in a way in cash, but even as a company, as buildings, uh, transferring that to, to, to kids or trying to optimize that is it, really challenging. So it is probably one of the best time to be in that field because it's probably where we're going to have that biggest impact. And there is room for everyone. Sometimes people stay, seems to think, oh, it's um, um, not saturated, but there's so much advisor, so much planner right now that there might be fighting for clients, if I can say. Definitely not. I, I hear or I'm getting contacts, I would say almost on a daily basis by new people looking for someone to, to help them, someone to, to make analyzes for them, someone to... To, to take them through their financial life and get to retirement with them. So there is always possibilities. It's gonna be a changing world for the next five, 10 years, that's for sure. But however, that changing world is probably what, what brings, um, I wouldn't say joy, but what, what makes our life um, fun uh, and, and all of this, uh, I would say, to, to really go forward and try to, to really make uh, a difference. That, that's what does the thing. Great, thank you so much. Um, well, maybe now it's time to look at some questions that have been asked uh, by the audience. Okay, fantastic. Uh, do you want me to read them to you? First of all, I'll ask uh, Doan Ash if you want to speak up yourself and read the question. If not, I'm happy to read them for you. So you can write in the chat if you prefer for me to do it. Um, I'll start with Doa. So uh, Doa, what is the fees range of FP and is it tax deductible? That's a very good question. And it, it's something being asked by, by a lot of clients. Um, there is two, I would say two, two different ways that we can do planning. Uh, the one that is less known or less used, if I can say, would be, I don't have a better word for that, but would be a financial planner paid by the hour. So it's not someone managing assets. It's not someone that, um, that um, take care of our portfolio. It's someone that do sporadic or, or um, spot checks in our financial life. 
So just like our accountant. So we go see that person. They're doing a good plan. They're building up strategies and they're showing those strategies to, to, to their client. That person gets paid. Thank you. And they go to another mandate. Client goes with their planning and try to apply it as much as they can. And that is perfect for some individuals that do want to manage their investment by themselves, that might not need insurances, that are not really a too, too much of a complex situation. It might be perfect, but it's not, a, it's not something popular. There's not a lot of those planners. When we comes to the, the, the I would say the, the most normal one, um, usually there is definitely a fee to, to, to deal with, uh, with some individuals. Uh, it, it's hard to say how much because there is a fee applied by the products. There is a fee applied by the firm or the planner. There's, but basically a client could think about paying somewhere between one and 3%. 3% being very, very, very high. 1% uh, can be meaning be being in the lowest, uh, but it's an idea. So let's say I have uh, $250,000. Yes, it might cost me 4,000, for instance, to deal with a financial planner. However, it's gonna make, bring a lot more value. And that's what we have to think about. It's something that we cannot do everything in life. And when, when I like to say to clients that say, yeah, but I can do my investment by myself. True, you can do everything by yourself. You're gonna still get pay some fees because all the products do charge fees. However, you can do it, but you don't know, how can I say that in a smart way? You don't know something that you don't know. So for instance, exactly. But if you don't know that the TFSA, the tax-free saving account, exists, it's a very easy example, but just to give you an idea, you won't Google it. You won't make research about a TFSA. You don't know that it exists. And that's our job as a financial planner to tell you, you know, I think you're forgetting this. I think you might be using that, or there might be an opportunity here. And that worked a lot more. But if I have a planner or an investment advisor, or no matter what that person is, because there is some different level or the, wouldn't say level, but different designation. Uh, and that person calls me once a year and say, uh, hey, Guillaume, uh, it's time to contribute to your RSP, put 5,000. And I never heard of her, that person again for the next five years. Yes, it might be a little bit more, a little bit too, too expensive. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if a good planning is made, you're going to get a lot more for your money than what it costs. But there is a cost. And we can't do everyone. I was, I was saying earlier, I cannot fix my car myself. I cannot renovate my home myself. I cannot uh, uh, fix the toilet myself. I cannot um, make my will myself. I need a, a notary. I cannot uh, designate or decide what are my health problems myself. I need a doctor. So in a lot of cases, we seem to think that investment, it's easy because everyone can do it online. But there's so much subtility, so much element that people are not thinking of when they're doing it on their own, that what makes a difference. So uh, it, it, there is a cost, but it worked that cost a lot. Thank you, Guillaume, for such a detailed answer and for using such great comparison. Uh, it makes it clear for everyone, someone who doesn't know much in finance. So thank you so much. I'll jump with Ash's uh, Ash question here. So do financial advisor planners plan taxes like accountants do? It's a loaded question. So um, like accountants do, what is the difference similarity between having a financial planner versus accountant for personal finance? So there is a thin line in, in some cases. So that really depends on the type of accountant we have, because there is a lot of accountants and I'm not, I'm not blaming, blaming them, that is their job, that are doing taxes, but they're not optimizing taxes. And reason being, that's what they're, they're coached, that's what they're, they're, that's what they're trained to do. So if we have a fiscal expert, just so a fiscalist uh, as per se, uh, that person could be doing, yes, optimization, making sure, are we taking all the credits? Are we taking the RSPs at the proper moment, the good amount and so on? But this person might cost somewhere between $250 and $500 an hour. So it is probably the best professional we can have, but it might be costly depending on my situation. So we as financial planner are working with tax expert. So I do have a tax expert that I'm speaking with on a, I would say weekly basis that can get involved in my client uh, uh, planning if needed. So the difference is, is I would say the accountant as per se 
is more involved when it comes to tax season. Or if I have a company, bookkeeping and all that stuff. But they're not really working on optimization. It's not an arrow pointing at them. It's more, it's not really their job. Tax expert will do that, but at a high cost. So a good, the best thing you can have is a financial planner that works with a tax expert and an accountant. And when I'm meeting with clients, if they have their own accountant, it's something that I would do. So I'll call the accountant, okay, I'm planning to do this. What would be the impact on your side? And we're working together to trying to, to make that, that planning a lot better. So I think that would be the biggest difference. When it comes to similarities, however, uh, accountant and fiscal expert are not doing investment. They're not doing insurances. They're not doing, so it really comes to taking a picture of the actual moment, but they're not planning and it's not, a, it's not something against them, but with 25 years down the road. So they're not building plans 25 years down the road. They can tell my client, when you sell your duplex, this is the impact that you'll have, but they'll not necessarily make a plan for that. So all these are all working together to make sure that we're, we're offering the best to, uh, to the client. Yeah, this seems like uh, related to the differences between accounting and finance. So that you have a, a, a broader finance um, overview of everything. And accounting is just a tool for, uh, for that purpose. Exactly, and Ash, you're really asking the right question. So I'm having even more questions from him here. Uh, during time of crisis and looking at the current market, are human prediction, which, which are more emotional, better than robots algorithm? Um, are financial planning firm using more computer predictions algorithm? or less as a result of the current market? That's going to be a tough one to answer. And there's <laughs> some, some parts in there that, to be honest, I won't be able to, to provide you with the best answer, but I'll do my best. From my point of view, a machine is very good when it comes to replicating something. So if I'm telling you that every time a company or a stock hit a certain point, it's going to be... The, the impact or the next movement is going to be like this. And a machine can replicate that. Uh, intelligence artificial, uh, artificial intelligence can make prediction on, on models on how we're going to go and so on. But when we do have a crisis, like for instance, we had in 2008 or what we had in March, last March with the COVID, um, it is very different because there's still a portion of market that is affected by offer and demand. And therefore, when human beings start to bring their emotion on the table and start to sell or buy investments, it can have an impact on the whole market. If everyone, tomorrow, everyone stop or everyone starts selling their investment, the market's going to go down. But that's something based on emotion. Everyone decides to sell their investments because of COVID. A machine cannot predict that. A machine could maybe, artificial intelligence, say, there is some news coming in, COVID, that news is not good. Normally a human being, when it heard some bad news, reacts like this. But at the end of the day, it won't be as, as much or as accurate as if a human being that has those same emotions take that decision. So as of now, I think there has been a lot of, uh, of, of calls of transaction by the managers, and I'm not a, a portfolio manager as per se. I do buy products or investment that are managed by teams of portfolio manage, management managers. Sorry, So I think those managers right now are using really both. Um, the the long-term strategy is probably, and I'm not there, so I'm really the way I'm seeing it. The long-term strategy is probably more built on uh, algorithm while the short-term movement, what's going on on a daily basis is more managed by human being based on emotions, based on how the markets are going, based on their, their experience, based on the, what they read and how they think people will react to that. So I think it's really an hybrid between the two at the moment. But we're gonna go more into the, as, as artificial intelligence is getting better and better and better, I think we're going more on the computer side. Yeah, and also it's true that um... The, when, when you were thinking about the, the human contribution, human predictions, they're not being done without the technology, right? They're being done with the support of the technology. So you can't really compare uh, with and without the human uh, touch because of all the reasons that uh, you mentioned, Guillaume. Uh, 
um, obviously it will be more important. Now, what you have to be careful with, which is you know, part of what you study uh, when you are educating yourself in finance is the, um, I guess the dangers of following um, you know, a, an emotional impulse when making uh, financial decisions. And then that's one of the, the values of a financial planner or any uh, uh, professional in the, in the best field of uh, finance is, uh, is that they will help you av avoid making those mistakes. You know, sometimes you have these biases, right? They are coming from a co you know, cognitive or emotional biases. Uh, and this is all part of uh, what humans have. And you use technology to try to remove those biases and also you use uh, some support, a human support, to also uh, work you through those um, those things. So, just uh, it's a combination uh, between the two. Thank you for the question. Yeah, well, would you tag team together there and really answer this? So yeah, for sure. I also trust that you cannot replace a human uh, anytime soon for at least all of the components. And now Paul, uh, Paul here has another great question here. So uh, a lot of people have short-term insurance to 60 or 65 years. What advice do you have for those people to cover them after 60 or 65 years when those insurance plans expire? So there is a lot of different views on that. Uh, I'll give you multiple possibilities if I can say, I'm not saying one. But, oh. Oh, no worries. Uh, I, maybe I can start. Uh, I can start answering while um, Guillaume returns. Hopefully, he will be returning. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Uh. So, um, just just for uh, reference, I did work in the retirement field um, as an actuarial consultant. So I, I didn't work as a financial planner, uh, but I uh, had to consider the. Um, the situations, the financial situation of individuals because they were participants in the pension plan uh, from a different angle, but I can uh, address this question um, because after uh, 60 or 65 years, once the person takes their uh, retirement, they will um, receive some benefits, right? So uh, the, that's why it's important to have savings while you are uh, still in an active career, you were working, you were receiving income, that should be enough for at least part of it to be uh, deposited in some kind of uh, pension plan. So that after um, um, retirement, you will be receiving that income. Now, uh, if you talk about life insurance, uh, which I, may be what this question is about. So Paul uh, may be able to specify if uh, he's talking about insurance in general, but if this is life insurance, um, depending on the wealth of the individual, there will be many different life insurance products that have uh, a certain behavior after age 65. Um, what is actually being used right now by the financial planners, I, I would be hoping that uh, Guillaume could answer because he's, he's working in the uh, financial planning um, for a financial planning firm. And I think he's coming back. So uh, just right in time. So I gave kind of a very generic answer and, and hopefully we'll be able to, um, to complete this from the financial planner point of view. Thank just you like a genie who came back. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry, I had a, a little technical issue that uh, cut me right away. So I'm sorry about that. But, uh, so as I was saying, it, it is a very good question and there's some multiple point of view on this. So. The, the first way or the first, first um, approach that I would bring is, is an insurance really required for someone over 60 to 65 years old? And I'm talking about life insurance. Uh, I just want to review the, uh, the question that you sent because I think it was really referring to life okay. so, It is, and it's part of the planning process. If I start to plan in advance, so let's say at 35, 40, 45 years old, uh, I'm trying to plan in a way that I probably won't need that insurance when I reach 65. First of all, because most of the, the, the plans I mentioned, mentioned are expiring. And second thing, because at that point, the price of insurance is getting really high. So I'm trying to, to, to plan to make sure that whenever it comes to, to that point, I won't need it. And what does that mean needing it? An insurance from my point of view, and again, there's a lot of different views on that, but 
an insurance is there to cover a need. I'm not taking insurance on my cars just for fun. I'm taking insurance on my cars in case I have an accident. So I'm taking insurance on my life in case I die and there is a financial impact on the people around me. If my financial planning has been well made, I think, and that's really, again, my view, that the financial impact of my death when I reach 65 years old or when I get to retirement will be a lot lower. My kids are normally grown-ups, so they're, they have their own life. They can manage their own finances. They're, they're good in life. I might have, or my mortgage might be over, so there's no real debt that needs to be covered. Um, my, I have investments. I normally build my wealth. I have portfolios. So it's also another approach, another vision. So as, as, as I'm going forward in my life, normally my wealth is going up and my insurance need is going down. And that's where I think that at 65 years old, I might not need it. However, there is some situation and I'll take, for instance, I do own, I like duplex because I'm talking about that three times tonight. So I own a duplex. I'm not living in that duplex. I live in, a, in my house and therefore that duplex will be taxable when it's sold because it's not my primary residence. I don't plan on selling it. I want to keep that for the rest of my life and I want to give it to my kids when I die. But I know that when I die, there will be some taxes. That's for sure. And I don't want my kids to be forced to refinance, to, to, to remortgage that, that duplex or to have to sell it or to cover those taxes because the taxes can be quite high. If I bought that duplex 25 years ago for $100,000 and I die in 50 years and it's worth $2 million, I have like six or $700,000 in taxes to pay. So I don't want my kids to be forced to sell that duplex. So one of the strategies that I could use is by getting what they call a permanent life insurance. So instead of being a term life insurance that ends up at a certain point in life, this one is permanent. It's going to cover me for the most, but for the rest of my life. However, again, that needs planning. Because if I take that insurance at 65 years old, the cost is going to be completely enormous. In some cases, it's still valid. But if I had planned that 25 years in advance and I took it while I was 35, then it, the, the price is lower. So that's one of the ideas. So Sometimes people think that they need insurance for all their life. No, a good planning will reveal that we might not need it eventually. If it reveals that we do need it, there is some products that we can use for that that can be used in the, in, before. And if that hasn't been planned, there, there is some, some uh, temporary, some term that it can still be renewed at 65, but the costs are very, very high. So again, we're going to have to decide what, would be the impact of, of me passing away. What I like to do is usually estate planning in this case. So I try to, I take all the investment, all the wealth or the, the different account uh, buildings and everything you have. And we do simulation on what would happen if those are all transferred to my wife, to my kids, to whatever, the tax impact would be different than all those people. And then we can decide, okay, do I really need it or do I don't need it? And that's where we can take decision earlier in the path. And we're not stuck in a situation at 65 years old where we say, oh, I should have done this. So I would say that would be my best answer. <laughs> Which is a pretty incredible answer. I think your family is super lucky to have you. Uh, just the thought process that you have, the numbers you put in, it sounded like something super simple at the beginning. And at the end, I'm like, well, can you do a bad mistake by not knowing what you do? So thank you so much. Uh, I think if, I can put, if I can piggyback on that, uh, Neo, um, we were mentioning earlier the cost of doing planning. And I was saying it like, can be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. The amount doesn't really matter. But I just gave you an example of bad planning, planning that could cost half a million dollars. So when you look at, and that's just one little thing into the whole possibilities of planning. So that's what makes a difference. Hey, I know it's, it might be a little more exaggerated just to, to touch our, our imaginary, but that's what it makes, makes a difference. Okay. Well, well hey, thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, for sure, if I'm buying a condo or anything, I will go see a financial planner. 
And uh, for all of you there interested to know a little bit more or maybe to, uh, to jump into a career in financial planning, uh, we're going to be sharing some links with you uh, later on. It's still time for maybe a final question. So while I'm uh, wrapping up, uh, feel free to think about anything in there uh, and take advantage of having these amazing speakers here today uh, share their wealth of knowledge. Uh, I would like, if, if there's no other question, and if there's one, we might want to go over that one. But there's one thing that we were having that conversation uh, earlier uh, this week. Um, I would maybe put the uh, the monkey on your shoulder, Eduardo, and say, uh, what is the, the program that McGill has in terms of financial planning? Or we know that the IQPF has to give the, the designation of financial planning, but how is McGill preparing these to their students to reach into the IQPF and get their, uh, their designation? Yes, so um, thank you for the question, Guillaume. So currently McGill actually does not have uh, a program that is actively accepting students uh, that is directly focused on the financial planning examinations that are uh, offered by IQPF and the, uh, and the uh, English version outside of uh, Quebec in Canada. Um, so uh, we are, uh, this program is under revision. It may come back as a different type of program, maybe not a credit program. It used to be a, a graduate certificate. Uh, it was called the Graduate Certificate in Financial Planning. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's been put under review due to low enrollment, which was uh, interesting. This was when I was arriving uh, at McGill to uh, play this uh, role in, uh, as academic coordinator. So I didn't really see um, everything that happened that led to that situation. But, uh, you know, the, we can see very clearly that this is a career that has lots of demand. Uh, it may be related to uh, the type of program that we had. It may be related to um, attracting the, you know, I think we not, can attract not only um, English speaking uh, potential candidates and students, but even French speaking as well, because much of the, um, uh, I think the, the population in Quebec is not only bilingual, but they want, they, they do have the interest in developing their English skills for professional reasons and other reasons as well. So uh, McGill can play a role there as well, with, uh, though differentiating ourselves a little bit from uh, other schools. But, you know, these programs, they, they exist in different universities. McGill uh, has its one under review. And in the meantime, we uh, also uh, offer other types of, of uh, finance uh, related programs, such as a diploma in professional practice in finance. It's uh, you know, two year plus, depends on the pace uh, at which uh, students will uh, take all the courses. And it's, um, it's uh, much related to financial planning, but I would say it's more focused on the institutional uh, side of the, of the business. So uh, the clients would be mostly um, not the individuals that you were going to be essentially, you know, uh, playing that role of a of, of the financial doctor, um, but the clients would be these institutions, the pension plans uh, or foundations, um, endowments, and you would be kind of doing the same thing. You would be, you know, measuring their um, their level of um, tolerance for risk and their uh, financial goals for that entity, and you will be um, giving advice to the decision makers as to what is the best approach to do you know, regarding that situation. So it's just that instead of looking at an individual, you're looking at an institution. Uh, and, and so uh, these are the different areas in our uh, world of finance. And, and, and McGill has been involved in, the, uh, in a partnership with the CFA Institute as well, as well as with the IQPF. Yeah. So I do participate in the IQPF um, professional development committee. I, I do participate in their meetings. And this is something that uh, as we hear more about um, the, the, the demand for uh, a program in financial planning, we're certainly open to uh, revive it, even if it's in a different type of format, maybe a non-credit program that would be focusing directly on the, uh, on the exams for IQPF, that could be one. I'm pretty sure most of your finances program can lead an individual to IQPF eventually anyway. Exactly, and we also had sure, IQPF. Yes. Uh, so we had IQPF and CFA at our last career fair in 2020, uh, right before the pandemic hit us by surprise. Uh, so definitely, yeah, very interested in our student. And uh, we have a last question. I know we're over time. I don't know if it can be answered pretty quickly. 
Uh, so Ash, uh, so much is having a financial planner for personal finance, one that knows what you describe, have connection to tax expert and accountant. It's a yearly cost per based on task. So as we mentioned, there's two different types. Uh, the one that is most common usually is normally a yearly cost. And yearly cost is, uh, is essentially based on, on assets. So there is, a, a, there is a fee that is charged as a percentage based on total assets. That percentage can go down as the assets are going up to try to make the fee reasonable for people. But it's usually uh, a yearly fee. Because we want, and there is a reason behind that. And first, I think it's a good reason. I'll try to cover that real quick. But if you give me a thousand dollars, I'll put it a big number to do a task for you. When I cashed in that thousand dollars, my task is done. There's nothing else I have to do for you. However, if you're giving me an hundred dollar a month to do that same task, I'll keep following up with you. I'll, I'll stay in contact with you. I'll give you a call back from time to time and say, okay, have you thought of this? Should we do that? And so, being paid a lump sum payment for a task for me takes away the whole planning part if i or the whole follow-up part which is very very important i can make the best planning in my life for a client but if i'm giving it to that person and she doesn't put it in place my work worth nothing so if i'm following up with that person we're meeting every month or two months or three months or every year and we're we're restructuring the plan based on what happens during the year because it's not it's not a, a clear path. We're, we know where we start, we know where we're going, but the path between the two is going to change. So every year there is some adjustment to be made. And so that's why I see as being, a, a, we call that a, an advisor fee or a, a trailer fee or really something that my client is paying me to keep track and to still be involved all the time in their files. And that's what makes a difference for me thanks <laughs> thanks i'm happy you had a chance to answer all of the questions in the chat i might be a few ones in the social media um so look i'll just wrap this up real quick ash is saying thanks a lot of people were saying thanks also uh so thanks again guillaume eduardo and for everyone joining us today uh so we really see that you're passionate about what you do and super knowledgeable uh so thanks a lot and as you can see we have everything already the recorded session uh live on social media so you can watch it again and we're going to be sharing also if you want to connect with guillaume eduardo or whoever at uh at cats or ses and this was the last session of an incredible day filled with so many industry experts uh if you enjoyed the session and appreciate the fact that it was free we hope that you will think about giving back with a simple donation on our Power Skills website, which is here in the chat that I just included. Uh, join us again tomorrow and continue learning and having fun. See you at eight with Naz Bilan Bokeh, learning to pause. And I'm gonna turn off the uh, recording if anyone wants to go off cam and uh, and yeah, maybe have a little bit more uh, a little bit more conversation.